Hello, viewers. As an absolute glutton for punishment, I thought that uh, it was about time to add another mount to the mix. Does it ever end? That wasn't a rhetorical question. The answer is no, it doesn't. Recently, I've come across a couple super cheap Minolta MD lenses. I couldn't pass them up, they were cheap. They are the 135 millimeter F3.5 and the 50 millimeter F2, the latter of which I'm gonna take a look at today. Now at first glance, did you also think these kind of look like Canon new FD lenses? Maybe somebody was copying someone else's homework. Now I'm not gonna point fingers, but I think they do share a striking resemblance. Right down to the little red nipple. Let's see how that affects YouTube's algorithm. Little red nipples. I instantly regret that. Released in 1981, this model is as old as I am, and I think it looks pretty good for its age as well. This was after Minolta dropped the Rokor title, which kind of sucks because I think Rokor X is like one of the most badass sounding names for a lens. This lens uses the Minolta SR mount, which is what they used before the A mount. It should be noted that Minolta's MD and MC designations are both SR and interchangeable, much like Canon's FL and FD lenses. Six elements in five groups comprise the optical design. The aperture goes from F2 to F22 and has a six blade iris. Minimum focus distance is one and a half feet or 45 centimeters with a throw that is just shy of 180 degrees. This lens is lightweight, coming in at a mere one third of a pound or 150 grams, and it takes 49 millimeter filters. Since I can't adapt SR lenses to my Canon 5D, which is the camera body I've been using to do test shots for these videos, I used my Sony a6300 to test out this lens instead. Being APS-C, my test shots can't speak to the true full frame edge to edge performance. But in the case of this lens, that might be doing it a little bit of a favor. When it comes to image quality, first thing I noticed is that even though it's decently sharp, that sharpness rolls off toward the edges, even noticeable with my 1.5 times crop. Bokeh is relatively soft, not buttery, but not too harsh either. There is some purple fringing around highlights. It's pretty soft at F2. When it comes to the build, it's pretty good. Small and lightweight, but not in the hollow way modern lenses can be. Unfortunately, the rubber grip on my focus ring has stretched out and wants to fall off. The long and dampened throw of the focus ring feels precise, but kind of slow. If you don't care about what I think, let's see what fellow YouTube guy Marco Aries has to say about it. Sometimes all you need is a cheap lens to slap on your camera without having to worry about anything. And for me, the Minolta MD 50mm f2 is one of those lenses. I am a strong supporter of these old gift lenses because most of the times they go from decent to very good. But still, I was quite a bit surprised by the quality of this Minolta. Both on film and digital, it has proven itself to be capable of delivering high-quality images, while still maintaining that vintage character. And sure, it might feel a bit plasticky, but honestly, I don't want to lug around a big chunk of metal all the time. Overall, I think this is a perfect walk-around lens. Compact, lightweight, and reliable. Well, that's it. Thank you for having me, and I'll see you around. I think I pretty much agree with Marco on this. For what it is, it performs as expected. A budget kit prime from the early 80s. Its strength lying mostly in its size and weight, and that you can likely find one for next to nothing. Well, I'd like to thank Marco for helping out on this one. Please check out his channel. Links, if you like what I have going on here, subscribe, it's as simple as that. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.